Well, good morning, everyone, and we're going to get right into this because we have confirmation today, and I want to make sure we don't shortchange that. So we're going to begin right away with the announcements. Uh, first of all, I know I've been mentioning this. I hope you have a chance to look at the, uh, the bulletin uh, board a little bit later. It is the Hampshire Association Summer Gathering, June 23rd from 3 to 6. Uh, barbecue by Tavern on the Hill from East Hampton. Bluegrass music by Barry Cyril um, and his bluegrass band. Um, it's a chance for us in different congregations to come together and enjoy each other's company and have a wonderful day outside. Uh, so I do hope that you'll think about this. Um, see if you got that day open on your calendar and maybe we can all get together down in Southampton. Flowers today are offered by Amy, and they are offered in honor of the children and youth of the church and all who guide them, since today is, uh, Christ is uh, Youth Sunday, Children's Sunday. If anyone would like to purchase uh, gift cards or stop and shop in Big Y, you know to see Linda. Also, thanks to parents and grandparents who helped with last Sunday's combined youth group meeting, which was here, uh, to Elizabeth Wilson, who I thought I just, there she is right there, uh, for leading our activity. She does that as part of her uh, summertime job, and she was great with us as well. And also to our confirmation class for setup and cleanup last Sunday. So today is Pentecost and confirmation in our church family picnic. And so that'll be taking place because we have a beautiful day. It'll be out behind the church. Donations are welcome to help replenish the Supper's Committee account. Volunteer opportunity tomorrow from 1 to 4 at the Western Mass Food Bank. Our Board of Trustees meets on Wednesday at 7 p.m. The Relay for Life is Friday and Saturday at Look Park. And Mary is out back right now because of the, uh, the picnic that we're going to be having a little bit later. If you'd like to make a donation to that, uh, the check would be to a, a American Cancer Society. And you can give that to Mary out back. The Hunger Doesn't Take the Summer Off Food Collection is on right now. Uh, so we have some items already collected here. If you want to bring in anything, the, uh, the uh, little cart is in the back. And also we are accepting monetary donations as well for that. And that will go throughout the month of June. Um, and I already mentioned our summer gathering. And so today is Pentecost. Does anybody have any announcements for the church today? Yes. On June 21st, I am once again taking part in the Alzheimer's Association Longest Day event, and people are encouraged to do their own thing. So what I am doing for the second year is a wine and music party at Black Birch Vineyard, um, which is on Straits Road in Hatfield. It's a wonderful location. It'll be an evening of music wine of course you are encouraged to bring along a picnic for to have something to eat um, and your lawn chairs so get your friends together um, come out and support a wonderful cause my mother passed away with alzheimer's and my father's second wife um, recently passed away with alzheimer's so it's a very um, good cause which is dear to my heart thank you any other announcements all right, um, so I think that is it. So let us hit the prelude, Blessed Assurance.
Where, where is it, Anthony? Uh, they don't lose. Oh. <laughs> Red 473 is 478. Whoever you are and wherever you are on your life's journey, you are welcome here at Hatfield Congregational Church. And uh, speaking of journey, today is Confirmation Sunday. That is an extremely important point in four young people's lives and their spiritual lives of our church. Uh, baptism was something that is done to a person. I once baptized a guy who was about 80 years old. And uh, before he was baptized, he has no voice in the church. No one has a voice in the church because you're not a member of the church yet. Uh, so it's not a matter if you're an infant or 80 years old. You don't have voice in the church until you're baptized. So baptism, someone speaks for you at confirmation. The church and hopefully the young people feel that they are at that point now in their lives where they can confirm, where they can affirm what was said for them at baptism. So this is a step into spiritual maturity. And so as we welcome soon four new young Christian adults into our congregation and into the Christian fold as a whole, uh, we welcome them. I ask you to say prayers for them. Uh, this is a spiritually important day. And also today is Pentecost. Today is the birthday of the church. And so you may see some people wearing red, such as the red stole. Jeff has got a heavy uh, red fleece uh, jacket that he's going to keep on even if he sweats because he wants to have the red on. I've got my cool red sneakers on for Pentecost. <laughs> Uh, we got red everywhere because the tongues of fire come down, and uh, we pray that that fire may light us as well. So let us now turn to our bulletin for the call to worship. We gather together because God has called us here. We wait in expectant awe of the Spirit's descent upon us. On the first Pentecost, the Spirit surprised all. The rush of a violent wind, tongues of fire, and uncontrollable enthusiasm, and the church was born. On this Pentecost, we can receive the Spirit and be changed. We can let God into our lives and we can let God help guide our spiritual journeys. Praise be to God. Amen. Let us now come together in our unison prayer. Amazing Spirit, who creates and sustains us as God's holy people, come among us to inspire and lead us out of our differences and to create understanding and an eagerness to explore what you would have us do. Incite us to become more involved so that we may feed our spirits and at the same time nourish others too. May we dream dreams and see visions. May we truly hear each other and respond to the needs of the silent. Give us the courage to rush out into the streets and to there proclaim Christ and his gospel to all who will hear. All right, I couldn't quite find uh, Anthony's first song, so I didn't get to sing that one. So now we all get to sing together Red Hymnal number 238, Come Gracious Spirit, and Because I'm Worried About Time, verses 1 and 2 only. <clears throat>
when Maddie reads on Pentecost, the uh, ones who huddled in fear and didn't know what to do rushed out into the streets and the spirit made strangers into one community. In that same Pentecost spirit of uh, different people coming together as one community, let us share in the gift of peace. could have our young people please come forward. So my remarks are going to be really brief today because we also are observing today Children's Sunday. And on Children's Sunday, we want to acknowledge our Christian education teachers and helpers. All right. So my, my story is about Pentecost, sort of. On Pentecost, we're going to hear about a violent wind filling the, uh, the room where the earliest Christians were. And that violent wind, ooh, somebody lost a dollar. Yeah. One of you guys lost a dollar? Oh, hey, I'm not bashful. I'll grab it. Oh, no, that's mine now. I'll take it. Here. Thank you. All right. Who was it yours? It wasn't yours? Oh, well, yeah, put it in later. Yeah, okay. So the violent wind just kind of filled that room. You guys like kites? You don't like kites? Okay. You like kites? I love kites. Um, I like kites? I love kites. Um, but I, I don't know how to control myself with a kite. Um, if I got string, I like to get more string. So I buy a whole bunch of string and I let the kite go. And where I lived, I would let it go so far and you can let, you know, you think you're in control of the kite. But when the kite decided, the wind decided that it wasn't going to stay up there anymore, it didn't land in my property. It didn't land on my street. It landed one street over on somebody's rooftop. So I had so much string out there that it went across my yard, across my neighbor's house behind me, and then it landed in the other house. So I had string going all of that way because you can't control the wind. When the wind says, I'm going to go that way, fine. When the wind says, I'm going to stop, you can't do anything about it. That's Pentecost. We can't tell God what God is supposed to do. And a lot of times, church and Christians and, and you know, institutions, we try to say, God, you've got to behave like this. And God says, no. No one expected Christmas. Christmas. No one expected Good Friday. No one expected Easter. And no one expected Pentecost. God don't have to listen to us. We have to listen to God. And that's the message of Pentecost. Let the Spirit blow and we go where God needs us to go. All right. Now, at this point, I think, Anita, would you like to uh, take over? Sure. So um, each year we like to honor the kids um, for coming to Sunday school. And we like to give them a little present with a little bit of meaning. So what we're going to do is give each kid a little gift bag, and inside we have something sweet to eat. It's not big, um, but it has a sweet little message, too, about God's love and Jesus' love. So we'd like to present each of the kids with something. We can 
open those up after. All right. <laughs> so we gave something to our children, and now who's going to take care? All right, Amy. We also have, as you probably know, two high school graduates from Smith Academy. So could we have our two graduates maybe come That's forward? So and Amy? <laughs> and Elizabeth. like yesterday you were just doing your confirmation and before that just sitting on the steps. Mm -hmm. Please accept this gift as um, just from your loving church. Thank you. <laughs> and we're not done. Um, we can't do this without the volunteers in the church who are willing to, uh, every Sunday, and I mean all year, uh, right through the summer and everything, devote their time. And uh, so would one of our deacons like to come forward for the presentation, or do you want me to, or? Carol, me? Oh, you deacons are chickens. You're chickens. <laughs> all right. So let's start. Maddie, for all the times that you go downstairs, where's, where, there she is. Maddie, for all the times that you go downstairs and watch, or downstairs or in the pie room to watch our children, thank you very much on behalf of the church. <laughs> Harry, same thing. For all the times that you help out with watching our young people, thank you very much on behalf of the church. <laughs> Megan. Oh, Megan. All right. So thank you also for helping out every time that you can with our, our young people in our program. <laughs> Amy Lynn, where's Amy? There's Amy. Amy, you're part of the CE uh, uh, committee, your board. We thank you very much for all you do on behalf of the church. And Lizzie. What am I missing here? Okay, yep, got that. Lizzie, for all that you do every Sunday, uh, for all that you do and the way that you treat those kids, the way you helped me last uh, week with all your activities, thank you ever so much. <laughs> and Anita, who is the chair of our Christian education program. Come on up, Anita. <laughs> we have a card for her. And also, the flowers in our sanctuary, uh, those are going to be here uh, to represent your presence here, and those flowers are for you um, after service as well. So thank you for all you do, seriously. Okay, guys, you can take off now. If you, um, I don't know if they'd like to come back up later to see confirmation, but they're more than welcome to come back and witness confirmation. Okay, thank you.
Now time for our joys, our celebrations, and our concerns. And so let's get the big one out of the way. Happy birthday, Anthony. He's 27 years old. So happy birthday. All right, so we're going from that high in excitement. We had to mention a special prayer. Um, did Mary come up? I thought I saw Mary over here for a little bit. Um, Ed McCarthy is going to have a biopsy on Wednesday. Um, so we're going to pray for him that the biopsy comes back negative. Um, so I'm going to go see him tomorrow. And uh, please keep Ed McCarthy in your prayers that um, all may go well uh, with that procedure on Wednesday. Uh, so prayers for our confirmation class on this sacred day in their lives. Um, I can't mention how important this really is. Uh, prayers also on Children's Sunday for all of those involved with our Christian education program, as we just mentioned. Prayers continue for Charlie Kellogg, who is now at Rockridge Assisted Living in Northampton. Prayers for Glenn and Denise Wagner in their times of special need and healing. Prayers for Muriel Kilbovich. Prayers for Lynn O'Master, she is treated for her cancer. Are there any other joys or concerns, celebrations that you would like to share at this time? Yes. Cancer. Okay. Keep her in our yes. Yes, thank you for mentioning that. I, um, you've heard me say, say before, I'm, I'm always worried if I plan to go outside, but God gave us another beautiful day for our picnic, no rain, so I agree with you, beautiful day. All right, um, so let us now just kind of turn inward for a moment and uh, let us just kind of whisper to God. Holy Spirit, Counselor, Revealer of eternal truths, continue to be poured out within and among us. Bring a new Pentecost to your church and help us to witness to the world the gospel of Jesus Christ in the presence of God all around us and deep inside of us. Draw us together into a single people inspired by the power of your gifts and your presence. And let our moments share together and alone with you in prayer Help us to grow stronger in our faith and in our commitment. And at this time, may we now join together in reciting the prayer that Jesus taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. God has made all of us heirs of great abundance in order that we may use the resources entrusted to us to benefit all people. We are children of God called to share with the world the generosity shown to us. God of wind and of fire, may new life be breathed into the world because of these gifts now offered. Our offerings are one expression of our Pentecost recommitment to the church. May we be as generous as our faith calls us to be and as our situation in life allows us to be on this Pentecost birthday Sunday.
all-powerful God of Pentecost. On that first Pentecost Sunday, there were Christians that just didn't know the gifts that they had within themselves until the Spirit set them free. We pray that these gifts, that maybe we don't recognize how powerful they may be, whether it be monetary or ourselves offered, that we set free as well, that we may accomplish what you would have us do as a Pentecost church. These things we offer our thanks to the givers and also our praise to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, with that out of the way, we are now able to sing Blue Hymnal number 263, Surely the Presence of the Lord is Here. Genesis 1 to Revelation 21. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. All right. Hold on. I think it's right here, the coming of the Holy Spirit. You want to read from there to 21. We didn't rehearse. Um, when the day of Pentecost had come, there were all together in, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And this sound the crowd gathered in, bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, uh, Elamites, Elamite, yeah, I don't know how to pronounce that, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Cappadocia Pontus, and Asia. There's so many place names. Um, <laughs> Phrygia, Pont <laughs> Egypt, and all other parts of Libya began belonging to Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, <laughs> Christians and, Ara and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds and, uh, of power. 
All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea, who all, all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon, upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Yeah, okay, prophecy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs of the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's new and gracious day. I'll be reading uh, from the book of John, chapter 14, verses 18 through 17 and 25 through 27. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip? Even after I have been among you for such a long time, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father, when you don't believe that I am in the Father, and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father, living in me, who is doing the work, his work. Believe in me when I say that, that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do, will do the works that I have been doing. And, and they will do even greater things than these. Because I am going to the Father and I will do whatever you ask in my name. So that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. If you love me, keep these commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give me another advocate to help you and be with you forever. The spirit of the truth will The spirit of the truth, the word world cannot accept him, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, and for he lives with you and will be in you. All of this I have spoken while, you, while still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all, all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave you with, my peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Well, you should know by now that today is Pentecost, and Pentecost is the birthday of the church. This is the day on which God sends his spirit upon us and empowers us to be unbelievable, to do the unpredictable, to become more than we could ever, ever be on our own. God gifts himself to us, and when that happens, watch out. 
Seriously, Pentecost is uncontrollable. Pentecost puts God in charge. We are part of it as it unfolds. This is something happening in real time. It's not something that we can plan for. We're swept along with Pentecost. That's that image of, of fire and violent wind. You don't plan for Pentecost. You go along with Pentecost. In a bit, we're going to uh, get to confirmation. Those young people are at the age of learning how to drive, or they will be getting there in a short time. Have you ever been the parent with a student driver, and you're in that chair, that seat right next to them? That can be scary, being the parent of a student driver. You're not in control any longer. You know, Amy mentioned to our high school graduates, it wasn't all that long ago that we saw them here, and now they're off to college. Time flies by, and as you're sitting in that chair, that seat right beside the driver, you can remember them safely buckled up in the child safety seat behind you, but now they're driving in the car and your life depends on them. That can be scary. But you know, if you yell at the student driver, that sometimes makes things even worse. It doesn't get better. They get nervous, you get more nervous, and the driving gets even worse. When you try to fight the spirit, the same thing happens. You know, Jonathan just read that Jesus says to his disciples, even greater things will be done. That means that when the Spirit comes, you don't look to the past and say, oh, that's the way it has to be. You think to the future and say, greater things will be done. Don't fight that Spirit. Don't fight the violent wind. Don't fight the fire. Don't fight that push to become the church we're supposed to be, because when you fight it, it only makes things worse, like getting that student driver nervous and yourself terrified in that seat. So go along for the ride. You know, Pentecost pushed the church to break out of the expected, the guidelines that people thought had to be there. I, I'm constantly amazed. No one, as I told the youngest kids, would have expected God to come into the world like he did on Christmas. No one would have expected a carpenter's son to be the Messiah. No one would have expected the cross. No one would have expected that the resurrection would happen. No one, even on Pentecost, 50 days later, they're still expecting God to come in a certain way and they're sitting there waiting for him. And God says, I can't wait anymore. And he sends the spirit and everything changes. We need to be a people that are open to change. Boundaries are going to be broken. Boundaries are going to be shattered if Pentecost is for real. That is what's supposed to happen. Pentecost is going to change us and push us because if we think the world is perfect, then all of our work is done. But if we don't think the world is perfect, we don't think the church is perfect, then God is pushing us somewhere. On that first Pentecost, the earliest believers didn't know what to do without Jesus standing there beside them. So they huddled together quietly. Their numbers, though, had increased tenfold. There were 12 disciples. All of a sudden, in the beginning of Acts, it says there's 120. And 120 may not be an actual number. It could be 12, signifying fullness, times 10. We're going to change mics here. This is driving me nuts. Times 10 which means that it's a great increase. So the 120 could mean that we have a great increase in the number of Christians. So Pentecost isn't about numbers because there was a tenfold increase in the numbers, but God wasn't satisfied with numbers. God wanted a change in attitude. And so if we stop thinking about numbers and start thinking about attitude, we start to better understand what Pentecost is all about. You know, those first believers huddled together they were afraid to not be afraid. They just couldn't imagine going out into the streets of Jerusalem and not being afraid. They couldn't believe that God would give them the bravery to go out and be different people. So the believers seem to think that they need to have Jesus always beside them to do the things for them. Remember, as we talked in Lent, they're walking towards Jerusalem. And no matter how many times Jesus says, I'm going to die, they're still thinking he's going to be a king and that they're just going to get all the benefits of having a reigning king as their best friend. Good Friday surprised them. Easter surprised them. They're still sitting there after Easter. 120 people have come, but they're all like coming. They're trying to get into the ark. Remember Noah's ark? They're all trying to get inside the ark to save themselves from the destruction that's going to be outside the ark. But that's not what happens on Pentecost. We still have that storm imagery. A violent wind comes down, fire. Think of lightning. Think of a real summer thunderstorm. 
And all of a sudden, though, they're not saved on the inside. Salvation comes by blowing out the doors, blowing out the windows, and those people rush out into the streets, and they start talking to strangers. They start talking to anyone, the people they were afraid of, the people they thought were going to kill them, the people they thought did not matter to God. They start talking to them about Jesus, and all of a sudden, the church is born. And think about the fact that they're all speaking those strange languages like, like Maddie was talking about. All these people are hearing things, but others are thinking, these guys are drunk. And Peter has to eventually say, no, we're not drunk. It's only 9 a.m. But they're, they're saying, we're only hearing babel. So it's not like they're talking in Greek and Hebrew or Aramaic or Latin. It's that they're talking in God's spirit, in God's word. And the others who are outside, who aren't yet a part of the church, they're hearing God's word. That means that the Spirit rests upon them as well, and they're not even part of that 120 yet. Don't lock the Spirit into a box. The Spirit goes wherever the Spirit wants, and when the Spirit wants, the Spirit gets. We have to be open to that change. We have to be open to blowing out the windows, blowing out the doors, and being brave enough to go out into the world, to not be afraid that we won't be afraid. You know, that's what Peter realized on Pentecost. This was the guy when, you know, Jesus was around. He was so brave. You know, let us build you some tents, he says, up on Mount Tabor at the, uh, at the uh, Transfiguration. Or, you know, let me get out of the boat and I'll walk across the water. Peter always had something to say. Jesus says, I'm going to the cross. And Peter pulls him aside and says, you can't do that. And Jesus says, get behind me. But he always had something to say. For 50 days, Peter said nothing. And now with the Spirit, though, he goes out into the streets and he says, listen to what I said. And the church is born. We start doing the work of Jesus. Listen to what I say. And in the first sermon ever recorded, that, par that uh, story that, uh, G that Peter goes out into the streets and he proclaims, that's the first sermon ever recorded. And listen to what he actually says because we think we own the Spirit. You know, we thought that we could, you know, just give the Spirit to whomever we wanted. Instead, in an age where women's voices simply did not matter 2,000 years ago, God says through Peter, my Spirit rests upon your sons and your daughters. You may not think that the women count, but I, I do. In an age where the young were to keep silent in the presence of their elders, God says through Peter, your young men shall see vision and your old men shall dream dreams. You don't have to be quiet as a child. You have this ability to see visions. In an age where the distinction between a slave and a free person was absolute and distinct, the spirit don't care. Even upon my slaves, both men and women in those days, I will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy. Don't try to box the spirit in. The number had increased from 12 times 10, but they were not satisfied with numbers. No way, says the spirit. I'm not concerned about numbers. I'm concerned about attitude. Can you accept the fact that I am going to take you everywhere, that all people matter, and that you have to care about all people? You know, when the Red Sox are playing, um, I tend to watch that at night. If they're not playing, or if they're not playing well, I start flipping through all the stations. And I don't stay very long on any one station. And as I'm flipping through, I'm just amazed at how many of these superhero movies there are. Uh, Spider-Man, Superman, Wonder Woman, Iron Man, Avengers, X-Men, and I don't know how many others because I don't watch any of them. They're, to me, they're just, you know, they're still cartoons. But why are there so many of these superhero cartoons out there? Is it our fantasy that we need to have somebody with these superpowers come down and save us because we can't do it on our own? Is, you know, all of these things, these are entertainment. These are the places that we go to hide. Do we hide in these illusions that there is some greater something or other that's going to come falling out of the sky like Superman and save us? Or maybe, this past Thursday was D-Day, the 75th anniversary of D-Day. I saw all kinds of actual pictures, historical pictures of the, the men and the boys that stormed all of those beaches in France. They were ordinary folk. They were really ordinary looking people. They weren't G.I. Joe like in the movies where there's muscle rippling on top of muscle on top of muscle. These were sometimes boys. Look at those pictures and those landing craft. Those are scared boys. And yet look at what they did. Ordinary people doing extraordinary things. That's Pentecost. 
It makes ordinary extraordinary. And we're that same Pentecost church. And in this truth, we need to find our strength to be brave enough to be extraordinary. And on this Pentecost, we're also going to be celebrating confirmation, which is many of the same things, but now brought down to four particular young adults. Confirmation is their choice, made freely, to affirm what was said for them at baptism. But with that choice to speak out in their own voice, as Peter did so many Pentecosts ago, God realizes that they are now ready for more. So in confirmation, that class of four and us, this congregation of Hatfield, we will come into a covenant together. We will pledge our support of them and they will become a part of us. And it's not about numbers, it's about attitude. And my prayer for that confirmation class is that they be brave enough, not afraid enough to be different. So we're getting real close to turning in your, um, to the centerfold and your bulletin for confirmation. But I just want to share with you one little story that's for the confirmation class. I'm going to try and do this with my mic back on. So just before I ask the kids to come up and our deacons as well, you know how I share um, Yankee Candle stories with you on occasion? Well, here's another one. Wednesday, I'm working. It, they stick me in the museum. I don't know why they stuck me in the museum besides the fact that there's a door there. There's not a soul that comes through the museum. I'm spending seven hours by myself in the museum. You gotta find something to do. So I'm walking around and I see up in the corner, there's one of these uh, motion detectors, I guess in case somebody breaks in the middle of the night and steals a candle. And so as you walk by, you see the red light blink on. So again, seven hours by myself in the museum. I start watching that red light, and I see how slow I have to go, <laughs> like this, watching the red light to see if I can get by without setting off the motion detector. I set it off, I go back, so I go even slower to see if I can get by without setting off the motion detector. I'm doing this, not realizing I'm right beside a window. Other Yankee Candle employees are bored too. They're looking out the window. What the heck is Calvo doing over there, walking like this across the museum? One of my friends, who is uh, per, uh, property and grounds, and they come around to clean, I'm watching that light. I finally realize he's standing there like this in the hallway. What's gone? Calvo's gone crazy. He sees me walking like that. And my whole point of telling this stupid story of trying to pass time in the museum, trying not to be found by that motion detector, is sometimes it's okay to look stupid. Is sometimes it's okay to sound stupid. Sometimes it's okay to be different. Pentecost is gonna ask you, and you, and you, and you to be different. They're gonna ask you to live by the spirit instead of high school norms. They're gonna ask you to be filled with God instead of concerns about what job can I do to make the most money in my life. It's gonna ask you to be like Jesus and it's gonna give you the power to be different. Don't underestimate the power to be different. That's my prayer for you, that you can be different. The world needs a ton more different people. May this day and what we're going to do in this covenant give you the power to be different. All right. So deacons, if I could have you please come forward. We're in the centerfold of the bulletin. There are uh, group responses from the congregation, so please follow along. This is a covenant between this church and these four young adults. Mark is our head deacon, and he would like to say a couple of words. Oh, you want the, okay, you want this too? Confirmation class, could we come forward too? Mark would like to talk to you specifically, which makes perfect sense. <laughs> So 
So why don't you guys just take a seat for one second, then we'll call you forward. Hello? Yeah. Uh, my name's Mark Gillot, and I'm the uh, chair of the Board of Deacons. And I'm here uh, with the other members of the Board of Deacons. We've, we've got Jeannie Belden, Carol Benson, and Jeff Holtz. Um, the Board of Deacons, as one of our duties, is to assist the minister in forwarding the spiritual interests of the church and to assist the, uh, and to assist the minister um, and to assist those wishing to become active participants in the life of the church. So Perry and Maddie and Jonathan and Morgan, that is you. And through your confirmation today, you are becoming adult members and participants of this congregation. And we, as the Board of Deacons, would like to welcome you and congratulate you uh, on choosing to do this and for your efforts with Reverend Calvo to continue and advance your spiritual life. I've learned to think of Christianity as a lifelong journey about how Jesus wants us to live in the world. He challenges us to learn to love and respect one another and him. And that is truly a daunting task and a life's endeavor. We hope that you take on that challenge and that wherever your life takes you in the future, you remember that you will want to have a wonderful congregation of people like these to guide you, support you, and learn with you as you go. Thank you, Mark. So, alphabetical order, please. And I put Maddie, uh oh, 11 o'clock. All right, we have no time, we gotta go. <laughs> hey, Perry. Morgan, right in between there. And Jonathan. So our four confirmants and our four deacons. Friends in Christ, we are all received into the church through the sacrament of baptism. The young people who have come before us have found nurture and support through this church family prayer and study, family and worship. They have chosen to confirm their baptism and to claim in our presence a renewed covenant with Christ and the members of the church. You have already come forward, you who wish to affirm your baptisms by being confirmed this day. So Madeline Bell, Perry, Ella, Rashad, Benson, Morgan, Whitten, and Jonathan Wilson, this is where you need to follow along do you confirm your baptism into the faith and family of Jesus Christ? Do you desire an ongoing relationship with Jesus Christ? Do you promise by the grace of God to show love and justice and to witness to the work and the word of Jesus Christ as best you are able? Do you promise, according to the grace given to you, to grow in the Christian faith, celebrating Christ's presence and furthering Christ's work in the world. And now from the congregation as our part of the covenant, uh, may we all say together, Almighty God, who in baptism received these servants into the church and promised them eternal life, increase in them the gifts of the Holy Spirit, thereby strengthen them for their ministry in the world, through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Maddie, may the God of light multiply peace and grace in you through the sharing now of the Holy Spirit and enable you to faithfully keep your vows made this day. Perry, may the God of light multiply peace and grace in you through the sharing now of the Holy Spirit and enable you to faithfully keep your vows made this day. Morgan, May the God of light multiply peace and grace in you through the sharing now of the Holy Spirit and enable you to faithfully keep your vows made this day. Jonathan, may the God of light multiply peace and grace in you through the sharing now of the Holy Spirit and enable you to faithfully keep your vows made this day. Strengthen and confirm, O God, these your servants with your heavenly grace they may, might continue to be yours forever. As they renew their baptism, may the Holy Spirit guide and empower them that they may serve you and others in your name. Amen.
we rejoice, O merciful God, with these newly confirmed members of the Church, and in the gifts of the Holy Spirit so freely shared, and in the Spirit's power to awaken all of us to new truths, we give thanks that they have been moved to confirm their baptisms. Help them to live, not for themselves, but for Christ and for others. Keep them in your protection and fill them with your hope as they lead renewed lives in Christ. Let us, the members of the First Congregational Church of Hatfield, United Church of Christ, express our welcome and affirm our mutual ministry in Christ with this class. May we now recite together. We promise you our continuing friendship, support, and prayers as we share the hopes and work of the Church of Jesus Christ. By the power of the Holy Spirit, may we continue to grow together in God's knowledge and love and be witnesses of our risen Savior to all the world. So now if the deacons would join me. In the name of Jesus Christ and on behalf of the First Congregational Church of Hatfield, United Church of Christ, we extend to you the hand of Christian love. And deacons, I think we have... So on behalf of the church, each of our newly confirmed uh, young adults has received a cross and also a confirmation pen set. And a card. Congratulations. Congratulations, Terry. Gordon, congratulations. Jonathan, congratulations. All right, you guys, you can go back to your hymn, or your, back to your pews, and you can sing with us blue hymnal number 459, 452, Here I Am, Lord. sing people. Five, it's 11.05. I smell food outside. One? Two? One's good. Anthony says one. What verse? First one.
you understand who Jesus is, who church, what church is, and that you want to be a part of it, congratulations, because um, I know that it would be very easy to skip this whole thing and just say, um, you know, that's my parents and grandparents, and you know, it doesn't mean anything to me. Uh, but you have chosen to do something I think is extremely spiritually important. So uh, welcome fully uh, to the Church of Christ. So now before we go outside for our family picnic, um, let us gather for our benediction response. All who believe in Jesus Christ are commissioned, empowered by the Spirit. We are sent out to live and work as Jesus did, to actually continue the work that he began. The Holy Spirit has come to equip us for the purpose, for this purpose, so that whatever we do, we do as the people of God. The power of Pentecost is ours to claim. The Spirit offers us new abilities and goals. We will heed the Spirit's promptings and follow the Spirit's call. We are the presence of Jesus in the world. So, now let us go forth in the power of Pentecost Spirit to change the world and to usher in the reign of God.